Christina Collins, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. So when I think see my data, I'm thinking the matrix, and I'm pretty sure that that is not correct. Can you explain this idea of seeing your data? Well, there's a, there's a lot of different ways to present uh, data in 3D. Often people will take uh, data and they will put it into a 3D format by creating their own application. Um, and some of the things that we'll have at our session on Thursday are in that vein. I'm particularly excited about generating point clouds from just any sort of tabular data and then looking at those, those point clouds together. So if you have a table with an X column, Y column, Z column, and something that you want to color map, you can turn that into a shape. And then you can put data sets from multiple different instruments into one place and, uh, and look at them together. Um, and you can actually walk through your data. I think this is what you'll be talking about at your poster session. You can, yes. So, uh, so if you come by, hopefully we'll have some VR headsets available and people will be able to uh, walk through Antarctica um, or satellite paths or uh, you know, various representations of different things. And obviously, Earth and space science is a great uh, you know, category of data to look through because everything in it is already spatially associated with something. Why is virtual reality such a great tool for scientists? Because I usually think of it in terms of gaming, but what are the advantages <laughs> of using it as a scientist? Well, uh, there's virtual reality, there's also mixed and augmented reality. And for all of these, I always come back to the 3D aspect. Um, virtual reality in general, you can create and share experiences with people in a direct and repeatable way. One of the things that I really enjoy is when people put on the Microsoft HoloLens and put an object in the room in mixed reality and then they'll say some sentence that doesn't make any sense at all. You know, like I, I put the air traffic control tower in the middle of Liam's head, for instance, is a sentence that I have heard. <laughs> and everyone in the room is like, well, that does not make any sense to me. And then they try it on, and it makes sense to them. So you can uh, express really pretty complicated concepts sort of post-symbolically in that way. Mm -hmm. you, can, uh, you can create an experience, and then you can share that experience exactly as you experienced it. So when it comes to taking that and mapping that back to the concept of looking at quantitative data, um, we respond well to having data in a three-dimensional space, mapping information onto a territory. And so for a, a science use case perspective, Frontier studies where you're looking at data from multiple instruments where, for instance, you have uh, you know, satellite measurements and ground-based measurements, these are changing in relative position in terms of time. There's a lot to keep track of. When you express that in VR, uh, the information can just sort of fall out the way that it does when you make a really great graph. Was there a moment as you were sort of learning to use these kinds of tools that you were just like, oh gosh, I can see how this is going to change my research or how this is going to change someone I know's research or, you know, completely revolutionized the field. It was there just this sort of like, ah, moment. I don't know about completely revolutionized the field, but there have been a lot of, uh, of moments of real serious satisfaction with it. Mm -hmm. One thing that I'm working on in my own work right now is a study that involves uh, ground-based data for magnetometers in the Arctic and Antarctic, and then they're looking for, uh, for ultra-low frequency waves. Um, and then I'm also looking at satellites that are going through the magnetosphere. So when I put this into plots, I can look at you know, a certain set of dimensions at any given time, but when I look at it in VR, I can see where everything is relative to everything else. And I can walk through the satellite paths and observe where they are relative to the, the satellites on the ground. So it's very satisfying when you're able to create a good representation of your data. Cool. Christina Collins, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you.